Hello everybody, I'm Dan. Welcome to my Java tutorial series. Throughout my tutorials I will teach you Java using just Notepad and the command prompt. The order in which my tutorials are organized on both my website at javacjava.com and my YouTube playlist is designed to maximize learning by building on concepts from prior tutorials. This tutorial is part one of my instance initialization block tutorial. I'm going to open up my web browser here to javacjava.com, select menu, then Java OOP Tutorials. I'm going to scroll down here to Instance Block Part 1. Okay, Instance Initialization Block Part 1 Tutorial. Up until this point I've discussed two ways that we can execute statements in a class, constructors and methods. This tutorial will introduce you to a third way, the initialization block. There are two types of initialization blocks, an instance initialization block and a static initialization block. This tutorial will discuss only the instance initialization block. I will be discussing the static initialization block after the part two tutorial. An instance initialization block is simply a pair of opening and closing braces inside of a class, but not inside of a method or a constructor. Statements inside of the block are executed as an instance of the class is created. The structure for a code block looks like this. So you have your class, then you have your class name, then your opening brace, closing brace, and then you'll have an opening brace, closing brace with a curt with a bunch of statements inside of it. And that's an instance initialization block. So instance initialization blocks are quite useful when you need to perform some complex logic when the object is created, but you don't want to put the code into a constructor. A very common reason to use an initialization block would be in a case where you have multiple overloaded constructors and you don't want to duplicate the same code over and over again. Okay, let's go ahead and come down here and highlight this code. Okay, and probably notice uh, hit Control C or you right click and select Happy. Um, first, uh, first couple of import statements right here use the JDK uh, Job Development Kit 8, which is 1.8 and above. And I'll show you how to find that out here in just a second when we open up our command prompt. I'm going to move this off screen. And I've got a shortcut to the command prompt on my desktop, but if you don't, you can right click and select New Shortcut. Type in CMD, Next, and Finish. Okay. First thing we're going to do is type in Java C dash version, right? Okay, and then press enter. Now, if you don't see this happen right here and you get an error message, go ahead and watch my tutorial on installing the Java Development Kit. You want to make sure you get that installed and configured properly before continuing. Now, what we're looking for specifically today is you got uh, this is basically version 1.8.045. They're probably already, I'm sure, at a larger version than what I'm running for this tutorial there, but we're just primarily concerned with the second number right here, this 8. So that's Java version 8, okay? So, um, yeah, if you have 9 or whatever above that, then you're, you're all good to go because this is just using some, some classes that they introduced in Java 8. Okay, let's type in C, uh, CLS CD space backslash. CD is short for change directories and backslash tells it to go through. I'm going to use the MD command, which is make directory, Java, and I already have that folder. If you don't, it'll create it for you. Change directories to the Java folder. I'm going to make a directory today called uh, instant block one. Change directories to it. Notepad instance block uh, one.java. Instance block one.java is the name of my source code file, also known as my compilation unit. Okay. Let's go ahead and control V to paste all that stuff in there. Appear save, add a little spacing there. Okay, so um, we are going to be using the java.time package and calling all of its classes there, right? And the java.time.format package and calling all of its classes, importing all of its classes there. Not calling them, importing them, sorry. Um, and that's basically just for this one line way down here. And I've got this commented out. Don't worry about the syntax on the next line. Just know that it returns the current date, right? And that is this whole entire, um, basically all these methods chained together inside of here. So, and we'll add that to um, today is and display that to the console. 
So basically what will happen with this program is when we run it, it will, we always want to say like something like a greeting, right? This is, this is the welcome class right here. So we'll, we'll be like welcome, you know, or good morning, good afternoon, good evening, or good night, right? And we'll say today is, and then plus the, the current date there, right? And then I've got a couple overloaded constructors here too as well. So that's just kind of an overview on what it's going to do. Now I'll go through it line by line. So in the two classes here, welcome and instance block one. Instance block one contains the main method entry point. And today we're actually going to be supplying it with some arguments on the command line. So uh, we're going to be testing first if the arg string array, if its length is equal to zero, then we didn't receive any arguments. And we'll go ahead and create a new instance of the of a welcome object, right? And we'll invoke the no argument constructor, right? If we come down to the welcome class here. It just simply comes down here and displays this super, and then it leaves. But actually, it doesn't. What uh, what happens is it'll run the instance initialization block, which is right here. So, and it just basically is inside of the class. It's not inside of a constructor, and it's not inside of any methods, right? Our methods would be down here. It's just an open opening brace and a curly brace. Opening and closing curly braces, right? So, um, technically, right after the super executes right here, it will go ahead and execute everything in the instance initialization block, which will display an empty line to the console. And then we'll use the uh, local date time class and get the basically the current hour, right? And it's 24 hour format here. That'll, that returns the get hour method for that particular class returns back a integer in between zero and 23. And you can check the documentation and everything like that on, um, on Java's, for the Java uh, API if you want a little extra credit or need some more in-depth understanding on that sort of stuff. But that's just basically what that does there. So we're going to check if the hour is less than 11, right? 0 through 11, we're going to display to the console good morning. If the hour is greater than or equal to 12, right, noon, and less than or equal to 18, which is 6 p.m., I'll display good afternoon. Now, if the hour is greater than or equal to 18, 6 p.m., and less than 9 p.m., on 21, I'll display good evening. Otherwise, we'll display good night. Okay, and then it will just say today is. Okay, now um, coming back up here to the main method entry. So if our argument is not equal to zero, right, anything else, it will just simply uh, call, uh, well, create a new instance of a welcome uh, object there and invoke the welcome constructor with uh, passing it one argument and that's the first element of the um, arg string array. Remember, the first element of an array is at index zero, okay? So, it will come down here and it'll say, okay, do we have a, um, a welcome constructor that has a uh, one string, right? And it does. Okay, yeah, string name, great. All right, so we invoke the super method here, right? And then I call the system.out.println welcome back plus name. All right. One thing I'm going to go over here real quick, I'm going to touch on this, but I'm going to go over it really in depth in my part two tutorial just because it's super important. That's kind of ironic. Didn't really mean that, but it's going to fall right after super here. So um, when this comes down here, it will execute the super statement, right? We could also have a this um, with parentheses in there if we were calling some sort of other constructor. But the next thing it will do before it executes this line, so after this line, it will execute the instance initialization block, and then it'll go ahead and execute this, okay? So that's the order in which it happens. You always got your super called first, or this, right? And then your initialization block will fire, and then any subsequent statements inside of your constructor. And don't worry about that for right now. Go into the, the details on why that's important in part two of the tutorial. So, let's just go ahead and uh, save this and clear our screen. We'll compile it and run it.
Okay, now the first time, I'm not going to pass any, uh, I'm not gonna put an argument here yet. So just uh, no arguments here. So what we're gonna get is good morning. Today is Sunday, August 16th, 2015, right? And so if we come back here, that worked out, that worked out great, right? We just called the, the welcome uh, constructor, no argument constructor. And we had our instance initialization block execute right after the super statement, okay? Now I'm gonna come back up here and I'm going to pass it uh, my name as an argument here. Good morning, today is Sunday, August 16th, 2015. Welcome back, Dan. All right, so we um, basically invoked the welcome constructor with one string argument here, right? And you could see super executed and then called the initials, instance initialization block, All right? Yeah, actually, clear the screen here so we can bring this up and I'll just do that again, All right? And so super executed, then it called the instance initialization block, right? Which first of all, it displayed uh, good morning, right? So our hour is less than 11. My time here is actually like, uh, nine o'clock, 8.53 right at the moment. And um, so that worked. And then it went ahead and executed this next line down here, right, for today is. Okay, and then it came down and said today is. Then it finally came back up here into the constructor and said welcome back plus the parameter, or the, uh, yeah, the parameter uh, name of string type there, okay. So that's basically how all that works there. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and close out of this, close out of this and leave you with some final thoughts here. So in this tutorial, I presented an example of how you can save time and optimize your code by using an instance initialization block. In part two of this tutorial, I'll explain in detail how they actually work. Um, you know, actually I forgot one, one quick thing here. I'll pull this back up. The point that I'm really trying to make here is um, if we hadn't done an instance initialization block, right? Um, my, I've already gotten this particular point here. I'm gonna do is highlight all this code right here. Right, control C. And I'm gonna just delete the whole instance initialization block, right? In order to have accomplished the same thing, we would have to have posted all this code in here, right? And then posted all this code in here, okay? So this is, this is not a good programming technique because if we wanted to make some sort of change to this, well, or we add a whole nother constructor, right? Then we're going to have to make sure we update each and every individual line in all the constructors that we have, right? So that that's that's the beauty quite honestly of the uh, instance initialization block there so uh, as a matter of fact here i'll just save this and we'll compile it and i'll show you to work the exact same way there's our welcome back to Dan, and there's that so it works the exact same way but it sure does save you a whole lot of um, headaches there, you know, because you only have one little instance initialization block to maintain as opposed to, you know, if you wanted to add in a, a whole nother, um, you know, constructor, right? And something about like age or something like that, right? Now all of a sudden, look at what a mess this class is becoming. It's just becoming a giant, um, giant uh, mess so we'll just call it that anyway i'm gonna go ahead and close out of this and close out of that and that concludes this tutorial thanks for watching bye